in this video I'm going to be making the gauntlets for the Witch King of Angmar costume. I've got all of the pieces 3D printed from Semiflex filament, so we're going to be prepping and assembling those. Because they are printed from a flexible filament, I was able to print most of the pieces flat. Now the side that is down on the print bite is quite smooth, so there isn't any sanding required there, and then they can just be heat molded to the exact shape that I need. This does give you some room for on the fly customization also. With the knuckle pieces, I did design in this little cut line so that I'll know where to trim it later. That made the printing easy and it's very little prep work afterwards to get that nice smooth point. On the back of the hand pieces, there's already a bevel printed into the piece. So once it is folded there and glued into place with some semi-flex filament, then we're going to have that nice even bevel with very little effort. So let's get started with the heat molding. Now you do need to get these pieces pretty hot to get them to bend into shape if they're a little bit thicker like some of these parts. Uh, you probably want to wear gloves. It is a little bit hard at times because you lose some of your dexterity with the gloves, but it will keep you from burning your fingers. It did not stop me from burning my elbow. <laughs> so I started out molding the finger plates just by hand and holding them in place. Then I realized I could put them inside of these PVC pipe fittings, uh, put a pipe fitting onto either end and let it cool. And then it'll hold the shape that I need with that. Well, I can be working on another piece as another one is cooling. You can also grab a can of duster spray. If you flip it upside down, then that nice cold liquid that comes out will cool your pieces a little bit faster if you're in a time crunch or impatient. For the knuckles, as I mentioned earlier, there's this cut line that's already printed into the piece, so we just need to trim off that excess. There's also a little bit of printer garbage left on here, just some little narbles that we can just scrape off with a knife and then go back in with a Dremel to sand everything smooth to refine those curves on the knuckle piece here, and now it is looking pretty great. I did get a little bit overzealous with the knuckle plate and I kind of took off one of the tips on this. So I'm just kind of patching it up with a little bit of filament and a soldering iron. Just melt it on and then you can kind of shape it with the tip of the tool. And then just go back in and trim off any excess and sand it along with everything else and no one will ever know. With the heat gun again, we need to go ahead and just bend down these little tabs at the side. Those are going to be for attaching the pieces later on. It's gonna sit a little bit better on the glove with a little bit of curve in there. For the back of the hand plates, uh, we just need to go ahead and heat mold in the curves first of all. This is printed a little bit too thick, so it's a challenge to heat mold it. You gotta get it really, really hot, and then it really helps to use the upside down duster spray to cool it off, otherwise it'd be sitting there for quite some time trying to hold that piece into place. Uh, on one of these parts, I didn't have the tuning quite right yet, so there was a little bit of layer separation. I just heated it back up with the soldering iron again and kind of took care of that without having to reprint the whole piece. Next, we're gonna need to use the 3D printing uh, pen here to go ahead and mold together the bevels on these back of hand pieces. Just a side note, if you're having trouble getting the filament into the pen, it helps if you cut the filament at a little bit of an angle before inserting it. It just goes right in that way. To bond these two edges together with the pen, it helps a lot if you heat the piece up with the heat gun first. So I'm just getting that beveled edge nice and hot filling it with the uh, filament from the 3D pen and then pressing it together. So thank you Terrence for the idea of heating it up with the heat gun beforehand. That did help a lot. I'm going to hit these seams with the soldering iron just to ensure that everything is bonded well and then also to fill in these corners that maybe were a little bit rough or didn't get quite enough plastic into them. Also on that piece that wasn't quite tuned properly there were some little gaps on the outside so I'm just melting in some plastic with the soldering iron and then smoothing everything out with the Dremel. And these are fitting together pretty well. You can see how they move together. Next, we need to figure out the correct spacing for the finger plates. So it looks like about two centimeters apart from each of the little attachment holes that were printed into it. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna just make up a quick strap to, to attach these two. This is gonna be a temporary attachment because obviously the pieces aren't painted yet, so we'll want to paint those later on. But it's important to ensure that everything works together before reaching a point where you can no longer adjust the heat molding or whatnot because once they're painted, you can't hit it with the heat gun anymore. You'll make your paint bubble. 
So I've just made up this quick little strap here um, from the selvage edge of some fabric I had. Then we're gonna mark out that two centimeter spacing. Then use a punch to get some holes started. I'm gonna use paper fasteners, just these little tiny little fasteners to attach the, uh, the finger plates to this strip. So that way we'll really be able to see how they move together and what problems we might encounter once we do a permanent attachment after they're painted. This is a bit more fiddly and bothersome than I was expecting, but it is worth it to see how this is gonna work before I put the time and effort into making permanent attachments. You know, that's not the time to be figuring out if there's a problem. You definitely want to figure that out beforehand. So I'm just throwing these all together on this strap and we end up with this kind of cool looking little string of plates here, but I do actually need to cut them apart to have the individual fingers. And then we also just need to cut off these little bits on the gloves, they're just some extra zipper pulls and whatnot that are just gonna get in the way later on. To temporarily attach the fingers to the glove, I'm just gonna use some wire and uh, wrap it around everything. Again, this is a lot more fiddly than I was hoping, but I really need to know, you know, how everything works together before I commit once I paint it and do permanent attachments. As I'm doing this, I can see already a problem that I'm going to encounter. So I know to modify the design with regards to how these plates are kind of bunching together. The glove is actually a little bit shorter. The Witch King's gauntlet hands, they're kind of larger than life. They're, the fingers are very long. So I will revise that later on and you know make sure that there is a method in there for keeping the fingers elongated, but still allowing me to move my fingers in the gloves and have enough dexterity. And I did already find a problem that's really easy to fix at this stage. This side piece for the thumb was heat molded a little bit too tight. So I'm just loosening up that curve a little bit. Now, if I had already painted this and I tried to do, tried to do this, then the paint would bubble up and I'd end up ruining the, ruining the piece and have to start over. So this is why I'm doing a mock-up version <laughs> with temporary bonds so I can make sure everything is the exact correct shape and figure out how is going to be the best way to join them all together for the final version. So I'm just using some hot glue to attach the different pieces together using those little strap bits I left on the ends of each finger. And then also some elastic to join the thumb plates together for the lower thumb and the back of hand plates to each other. I'm gonna use that same method to put a strap around the wrist and a strap on the knuckle piece. So now everything is assembled together it's time to try it on and see how it all moves. Oh, one final step before trying the gloves on, I'm just gonna put some of those paper fasteners into the knuckles to be the rivets. It just kind of gives it a little more finished look. Again, not putting any glue in there because I wanna be able to take them out for painting. And <laughs> these are looking pretty cool, I think. Uh, they move quite well. They're not super restrictive. As you can see, I'm able to put one glove on using you know the, the hand that already has a glove on it so we do have enough dexterity there the main thing i'm seeing here is i need to make sure that those finger plates get elongated right now the fingers do look a little bit stubby but that's because the wire is bunching everything up with that temporary hold to the gloves so i'll figure out a way to to keep everything creepy long looking and i can still hold a sword which again that's going to be important i'm going to have weapons that i need to be able to hold this sword is a little bit small for the Witch King since it's meant for Reby Cheap the Mouse, but it was the only sword I had on hand to test with the gloves. That's the end for this Witch King cosplay episode. So the next episode, I'll be building more armor and maybe getting to the helmet. And in future, I will be painting and eventually distressing all of the armor, creating garments and weapons and putting it all together. Thank you guys for watching. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, of course, make sure you do that now so you don't miss out on future episodes and other content that I'll have upcoming. If you liked this video, then please don't forget to share it, like it, comment below. If you have any input or ideas, maybe there's something for which you would like to see a 3D printed solution or an idea that you would like tested. It's just more fun as an interactive experience. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Just gonna show you my Dremel setup here. I've got the extension, which is fantastic because you can get into tight spaces and you'll have a lot less hand fatigue. And then I have this super fancy setup. <laughs> it is an easel and a piece of wire that I've hung the Dremel from so that the cord is stretched out from above. <laughs> and then I have a butterfly because 
somebody gave it to me and I didn't know where else to put it. <laughs> if you don't have that kind of setup, just do it. Then there's my evil heat gun just hanging out here. I don't recommend leaving your heat gun near your Dremel setup while the heat gun is still hot because you might just burn the skin off your elbow. 